Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Sunday Morning Life. I need this a little lower. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Sunday morning training session for the warriors of the Most High. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. God is good all the time. And this is the day he has made and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you got a choice. Choose it, what pleases God. <laughs> oh, God is so cool. Would you turn to your sword, the eternal words of God, in Isaiah 14? If you still haven't received a newsletter or uh, the word for 2018, we have some copies left. Gladly give it to you or else you can go to Eternal Library. They're there too. <clears throat> Isaiah 14. And verse 12. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Amen? And we decree those things that are true. How you are what? Fallen from heaven. O Lucifer, son of the morning. In other words, he was a day star. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Lucifer was a light bearer of God. It says, how you have fallen from heaven. In other words, he was removed out of the presence of God. Amen? This is, the, this is so important. He was removed from the presence of God Almighty. How, do you, how, how many of you realize when you are removed from the presence of God Almighty, you pick up another presence? <laughs> that happened to Saul, King Saul. Do you remember that? Remember, because he was rebellious and disobeying God? And Saul was anointed. But because of his continuous rebellion, he kept justifying. So Saul started out right, but he didn't end up right. Amen. Then he began to chase the person who was anointed, David, and he hated him. Because there's a presence that hates God's presence. And the originator of the haters of God's presence is Lucifer. Amen. So when Saul, when that anointing was lifted from Saul, it says a distressing spirit came on him. In other words, that was a demon, devil, and tormented him. Because demons love to torment. Because if they can get a reaction out of you, they can get fed. Again, how you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. Well, if I'm going to ascend into heaven, it means he was somewhere lower than heaven. Because he was on the earth. He was the praise and worship leader of the universe. He was the one that brought God's presence. Now think about this. He said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So he was looking up, wasn't he? Because he was on the earth. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north, and I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high God. Well, that was maxed. God said, out. There's only one God. I think Lucifer forgot who created him. <laughs> he lost everything. You got to remember that Lucifer was there. He was God's right-hand man. He saw creation. He saw the earth being formed. It says that he walked through the fiery stones and everything. Why? Because he saw all of the things being created. And because he was right next to God the whole time going, whoa, this is cool. One day I'm going to be just like you. But see, he went beyond that. He said, I'm going to be above you. 
And the Lord's wonderful response was, you're going to hell, homie. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, hell, to the lowest depths of the pit. I want you to know that the lowest depths of the pit is called the bottomless pit. And we're going to talk about all that Tuesday. Hallelujah. Does everybody get it? So Lucifer was known as the day star. He was an angel of light. He had fallen from the royal position in heaven. And he eventually would be locked up in a bottomless pit for a period of time called 1,000 years. It is a dimensional port of darkness in the earth. <laughs> Lucifer rebelled against the divine order of God, trying to replace himself. <laughs> in other words, trying to replace God's presence with his own presence <clears throat> over the earth which God created. Because of his position as praise and worship leader was manifesting all the time God's presence. That's what his job was. You now the earth was inhabited with angels. So what happened? God removed him from this position and from his presence. And God shut down the earth. This is what we might know as the Ice Age. So there was actually the, what we call the perfect world, which God created. God doesn't create anything imperfect. Hello? And then there was the world we call chaos. That's when Lucifer was removed from the earth. It was chaos with him here then because he began to exalt himself. Then the Lord decided to restore the earth. And then something else happened. Now go to Genesis chapter 1 and we'll talk a little bit about this. Genesis 1, verse 1. Today's title is called Disconnected World. The Disconnected World. When you think about it, what was, if God's presence, Lucifer was the praise and worship leader maintaining God's presence on the earth, wasn't he? Amen? So when Lucifer was removed, so was God's presence. Does everybody get it? That's when the world was disconnected, wasn't it? It was called chaos then. <clears throat> in Genesis verse 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and earth. So I want you to know the first thing that God created actually was time. Amen? He created time. He took out of eternity chunk called the universe and said now there's a beginning and an end it's called time <clears throat> and verse 2 the earth was without form now god did not create the earth without form does everybody understand he created it perfect so something happened between genesis 1 1 and genesis 1 2 and that's called a chaotic time because after the fall of lucifer the earth became chaotic, and it was without form. In other words, being void, useless, being used for nothing. And that was that time, which we call the Ice Age. Is everybody okay? The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. We'll talk more about that later. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. So the Spirit of God is now the carrier of the presence of God, isn't he? And what was he doing? He was hovering over the waters of the earth. Why? Because God was getting ready to do something, and it's called restore. In verse 3, he confirms it. He said, then the Lord said, let there be light. The word let there be means restore, not create. He didn't need to create something that was already there. Let, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw 
the light and that it was good. And God divided the light from darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night. So evening and morning were the first day. Again, started off with a perfect world. Then a chaos world. Then a restored world. But because of the fall of Adam and Eve, we are now in a disconnected world. Does everybody get it? Because the world is disconnected from the presence of God. The Word tells us that. Is everybody okay? The world of God's presence was removed when God's presence, in God's presence. And so we are now in an arena of what we call a disconnected world. Satan, God's enemy, his desire is to keep God's presence, if he can, or man from disconnected from God's presence and keep the world disconnected from God's presence. Because Adam was brought forth in God's image, Eve was brought forth in Adam's image, and then something occurred because of Eve's fall, then Adam's fall. And when they fell, God's presence lifted again, and it was a disconnect. Now, the only way that God can bring his presence connected again to is through his people. Does everybody get it? Because the world is actually disconnected from God's presence. So the only way that the presence of God comes now is through his people until Jesus fully takes over the whole place. Is everybody okay? That's why there's such a fight, isn't there? It's constant, isn't it? Amen? So God's enemy, his desire was to disconnect God's presence from all humanity and so that man can be controlled by a Luciferian agenda and doctrine. And his main thing is deception. That's his weapon. And fear, which is his power. So he keeps people under control with another presence. In fact, sin now is the presence of evil. So you and I are always fighting the presence of evil. Does everybody understand? Remember, sin is the presence of evil. Sin is not the act. The presence of evil is what influences man to act. When they act, it becomes what we call a, trans, I mean, a, uh, a transgression. When the transgression is the act, it brings what we call an iniquity. And iniquity brings a curse on that person and on their family line. Amen? Sin is the presence of evil. Transgression is the act because of the influence, influence of the evil presence. And iniquity is the curse that comes from the act, on not only on the individual, but on their family line. Is everybody okay? Praise God. In Romans 8, 18. That's why the word says that it recycles every third and fourth generation. So we need to break that. Those are called ancestral curses. And we have prayers for all of these in the prayer booklet. So we can kick some butt. Romans 8, 8, 18. Disconnected world. That's what we live in. And who's the ruler of this earth? Satan. His demons, fallen angels. Remember our 30 the angels in, in Revelation 12, 7. It says war broke out in heaven. And Lucifer, the dragon, and his angels were cast out of heaven and sent to the earth. Hello. In verse 18, Romans 8, 18, is everybody there? Cool. For I consider what? The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Glory. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of who? The sons of God. So the whole earth is corrupted because of the disconnect of God's presence. 
And here, the word by, uh, of the Holy Spirit through Paul, he's saying, look at the hall of creation. God created the earth, didn't he? Amen. Eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God, who is us. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are called the sons of God, not of those who are led by the flesh. You can call yourself a believer, but you ain't a son of God. You're still living according to the flesh. You're a son of the devil. Amen. Verse 20. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of what? Corruption into the glorious liberty or freedom of the what? Children of God. Powerful. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs until now. Not only that, but we also, who have the first fruits of the Holy Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our bodies. In other words, we're waiting for that glorified body. Hallelujah. Then you can eat anything. <clears throat> There's no calories in heaven. <laughs> no Twinkies either, thank God. For we who are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is what? Not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for what? Perseverance or endurance. That's why the word of God, these are eternal words. These are words from God Almighty. This is not some kind of a book. I don't look at the Bible as a book to study. You look at the Bible as a book for relationship, which leads you to the presence of a relationship. Amen? So you and I should always look at this Bible, <clears throat> this training manual, as words from God to train me and you, and it should always draw you to God's presence, not away from it. If it draws you from a, away from God's presence, then it's called religion. That's where the word says the letter kills, but the spirit brings what? Life. How many people will know, I know the word of God, but they're still heathens. Amen? They're still doing the wrong thing. A lot of people know the truth, but can't live the truth. You know why they can't live the truth? The lack of God's presence because they are still associated with a fallen, disconnected world from God's presence and can't get free. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5. So the earth is waiting for the sons of God to bring what? The presence of God. Does everybody get it? Anybody get it? <laughs> I'm excited about that. Oh, yeah. Woohoo! That's why we should be lovers of worshiping God. Why? Because that's the only connect you can get into that brings God's presence. We are worshipers. Why? Because we are lovers. What does the Father say? He searches those who will worship me in truth and in spirit. Don't you want to be searched by the Father? Amen. Well, then you've got to worship him in truth and in spirit. Worship. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5. I want the Father to look for me all the time. Because I'm looking for him all the time. Verse 18, glory. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. For we know that whoever is born of God does not continue in sin. That's a state of being, isn't it? If you are truly born of the Spirit of God, filled with the Spirit of God, you don't continue in sin. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. Believe me. It doesn't, you may say something when that hammer hits your toe. 
or when you bump into that corner of the table, oh, snap, <laughs> you know. You could at least say, holy shift, you know. <laughs> Why? Because you're going on another course. <laughs> I'm going to go another course, man. I'm not going to go into that unrighteousness. I'm going into the way of righteousness. So I'm going on a holy shift. Hallelujah. We know that as ever born of God does not continue in sin, but he... He who has been born of God does what? Keeps himself from what? The presence of evil. Everybody got it? The presence of evil. And the wicked one doesn't touch him. Why? Because if you don't keep yourself in the presence of the evil, the wicked one's going to touch you. He's going to influence you. Then you're going to bring a transgression and an iniquity. And then what you sow is what you reap. And nobody outruns that. Verse 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world. The whole world. Everybody got it? The whole everything. All education, all TV, all music, everything. Everything. Is it all movies, everything. Is under what? The sway of the wicked one. Why? Because he rules this earth. God owns it. Amen? But Satan rules it. And his kingdom. So you and I are influenced constantly. Man, think about driving down the road. All of the billboards you're influenced with. Look at TV commercials. I don't know if you saw... The Super Bowl halftime, that was a demonic worship session. I don't know if you noticed that Prince became the devil. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But he was sacrificed for Satan's kingdom. And he even said it in that song they sang during the Super Bowl, I will die for you. And at the exact time that he said it, if you coordinate the time of it, that was the day he died. That was on the billboard. When you begin to understand Satan's kingdom and how he expresses things to mock mankind through numerology, through events and things that are going on, it will blow you away. That's why God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This is training sessions. This is where we learn to expose the enemy and to constantly expose his presence so that we can constantly maintain God's presence because that's the only way God's presence is here, is through his people. Does everybody understand it? All right, let's go a little further. I want to say, uh, speak 19 again. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Look at all the m media. That's how the enemy's voice gets out, through the media. <laughs> See how many people are deceived. They have no idea under the uh, uh, Luciferian agenda, the uh, uh, demonic, uh, what do you call it, the democratic theology. That is all demonic. It's of Satan. How many believers voted for a man that's an antichrist? It's incredible. They voted for a man that was an antichrist. Obama was antichrist. Not the Antichrist, but he was Antichrist. He mocked God. He promoted same-sex marriage. He promoted abortion. Everything that God hated, he promoted. He's called Antichrist, and people didn't realize it. Look, at this is not about gender, color, race, anything. Tradition. It's about you and I are to judge by the fruits. We're to be fruit inspectors. Amen? We judge by the fruit of a person. It doesn't mean every person's perfect. Amen. But what is the intent? What's the motive behind it? People are paying the price that voted for that man and put him in office. They're paying the price today still until they turn from their ways. Other than that, they're taking. Remember, the Lord said something very powerful. Look, we're in the last days. In fact, we're almost in the last minutes. He said in the latter days, because they refuse to accept the truth, I would give them strong delusion. 
And you are seeing strong delusion over the whole world. Over the whole world. Let's read 19 one more time. <laughs> we know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols which bring the presence of sin. Amen. Praise God. Born of the Spirit. <laughs> that means you and I must continue in God's presence, avoiding the presence of evil. The world is disconnected from the presence of God. You only connect to this from God's presence that brings to this world is by God's people. That's why he says, seek my face. He, what does he say? Seek ye the kingdom of God and, all th and his righteousness and all things will be added. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Amen? 1 John chapter 2. Now, there's something more that mankind is disconnected from. Ah, thank you, Jesus. They're disconnected from not only God's presence, but his words of covenant and promise. They're disconnected from the weapons that God gives his children. So they don't know how to fight. That's incredible, isn't it? Think about it. There's fighting according to the flesh, not according to the spirit. And again, they're controlled by deception and fear. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 15. I love this verse. He says what? Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That means God's presence isn't there. There's a disconnect. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the what? Of the world, because the rule of this world is Satan and his kingdom, which promotes lust. That is the main course of everything of Satan's kingdom. Lust is an overwhelming desire. That's why you and I always must do a self-examination of what is my desire? What is my motive? Self-examination in everything we do. In verse 17, and the world is what? Passing away in the lust of it. But he who does the will of God does what? Abides forever. So if you're not doing the will of God, are you going to abide forever? Heck no, the only place you're going to abide is in a, you're going to become a hot dog. <laughs> Verse 18. Little children, it is the what? The last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now there are many Antichrists. We just threw one out of the president's office. He's an Obamanite. Amen? And all of his cronies, they're still in office. They're eventually going to get thrown out. Even now there are many antichrists that have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. You've got to remember, government is associated with principalities. That's how they control things. That he put in laws to control people. I'm not saying that some of the laws aren't to protect people, but their intent is to control them. Verse 19, 
It says, they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have an, a what? An anointing from the Holy One, known as the Holy Spirit anointing. And you know all things. In other words, you can discern these things. You can see these things. Your life is no longer entangled in the world. You are entangled with eternity. You are a son and daughter of the Most High God. You're an expression of His divine nature and character if you allow that to happen. So you and I have anointing. Why? He says, don't love the world. It's to disconnect to God's presence. Gets controlled by deception and fear. Promotes lust and greed and pride and rebellion. And there's only one way of escape. And that's through Jesus. And the anointing that he left me and you. See, the world doesn't have the anointing because they don't know anything about it. They don't understand the anointing of God. And the anointing of God is, first of all, the eternal presence of God. Amen? The eternal truth of God and the eternal power of God so you can overcome the presence of sin and evil. Without the anointing, you and I are nothing. It was the anointed one who became flesh. The anointing is everything for me and you. The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty to overcome the devil. Remember, after Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit in front of everyone so it could be written, like he didn't really need it, you know what I'm saying? He had to kick butt anyways. But he had to be the example for me and you. He said, this is how you do it. You, you repent, you accept me as Lord and Savior. You are washed by the blood. It's called the, and then there's a symbolic baptism of water, and you don't go to hell if you've never been baptized in water. That's a bunch of religious garbage. You're washed by the blood. That's called the remission of sin. That's the first baptism. Then he says, I got another one for you. You want to be like me, he says? Then get filled and get baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'll give you a language that speaks directly to me and no one can understand it, not even you. And the more you pray in that language, the more faith you're going to get built and that brings you more connection to me. And I'm going to impart things in you and then I'll bring it to remembrance when you need it because the devil can read your mind. Another theology of religious acts. Oh, the devil can read your mind? Oh, baloney. Where do you think the battle is? Okay, let's. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. So the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty to reconnect us. To reconnect us to him because the world is disconnected humanity is disconnected from God's presence and God wants to bring the world back to him because he loves us it says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son why to reconnect amen John chapter 1 Oh, yes. You don't learn this stuff in Sunday school. We want fresh rhema. I love to eat. Fresh rhema. I don't eat Twinkies. I eat enough other stuff. John 1, verse 6. Is everybody there? There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light and that all through him might believe, might follow, because that's what the word believe means. If you're not a follower, you're a liar. 
He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which was, gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world. That, in other words, Jesus was in the world. And the world was made through him. And the world did not know him. He came to his own and his own did not receive him. Why? Because his own was disconnected from the presence of God. Listen, the presence of God, it says, where God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, you know, because he loved the world. It says that the presence of evil cannot comprehend the presence of God. It can't comprehend it. Until it becomes the presence of God, then the presence of God connects to the presence of God. It's like taking a glass of water and you have a glass of grape juice. I'm but up grape color juice. You mix them, they turn color. It doesn't work. Because the clear water begins to lose. It takes on another color. So in this, the only way that the water can maintain clear is to put clear water with clear water. Now you can see through it. Does everybody understand? Because any other color of water would not allow you to see through it. Then you can't comprehend it. That's what God's talking about. His presence, his light. He said, they can't understand me because they don't carry my presence. Only God's presence understands God's presence. Evil presence cannot comprehend God's presence. It's impossible. Oh, glory. Everybody okay? Hallelujah. Okay, let's go a little further. In verse 11, it says, He came to his own, and his own did not receive him because they were disconnected from God's presence. But as many as received to them, Received him to them. He gave the right to become children of God. What did he do? They accepted him and he gave him his presence And to those who believe in his name they followed him who were born not of blood Not of the will of the flesh Not of the will of man And we'll talk about more of that at another time Because there's a difference but of the will of God which is known as the spirit Born of the Spirit of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, the presence of God. And we behold His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of what? Grace and truth. Grace meant His plan and truth. Grace is God's plan to escape. It's not some unmerited favor. Somebody get it? You earn God's favor. But the grace that is spoken about here is God's plan of escape. It says you and I were saved by grace, by his plan. So you got to cooperate with the plan to escape. Amen? Real simple. It's spiritually common sense. Never allow grace to allow you to sin. Well, I'm under grace. I can do whatever I want. No, you're not. That's a different grace. That's a deceptive grace. You are under grace, which is God's plan. It's to escape. If you're not cooperating with the plan of God, then you're under judgment. Does everybody get it? That's why he, the Holy Spirit convicts first. Then he chastens before judgment. Oh, glory. John carried the presence of God, the anointing of Elijah, it says, since birth. What was he to do? Turn man back to God's presence and become the resistance to the presence of evil. That's why, remember, they were hunting for those of the way. Remember? Paul, uh, Saul, who became Paul. What was he doing? He got certification to uh, go out and kill all Christians. <laughs> they were known as the way because they were resistors. They were the resistance. Now you and I are the resistance of the presence of evil so that we can 
Release the presence of God. Oh, hallelujah. In Isaiah 40, Disconnected world, the disconnected world. This is where we live, and we live in a disconnected world. And it can only be connected through me and you. Isaiah chapter 40. Everybody there yet? Start at verse 1. Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended. That's why we speak for the peace, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. That her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Who was that? John the Baptist. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight the desert, a highway for our God. Prepare the way of the Lord. In other words, prepare for the presence of God. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight. The rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The voice said, cry out. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. John the Baptist was a messenger. He was a carrier of God's presence. But when Jesus showed up, the first thing that John ha happened to John is he went into prison. Because John represents, when Jesus shows up, John represents the old man now. Does everybody get it? So as he was introducing the forerunner of God's presence, but when the, the king shows up, the new man, the one who brings new man, John goes into prison. And then the next thing happens, he gets beheaded because now Christ is the head. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. 2 Peter chapter 3. be a lot of surprised people who thought they were good because they still eat from the tree of good and evil and not eat from the tree of life. Second Peter chapter 3 in verse 1. Let's speak it. Beloved, I now write to you this second epistle in both of which I Stir up your pure minds by way of reminder that you may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days walking according to their own lusts and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world then then existed perished being flood with water. But the heavens and the earth which are now preserved by the same word are reserved for what? Fire, in other words, it's going to get destroyed again. 
Why? Because of the disconnect of God's presence. And reserved for fire until the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, don't forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. Some count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to what? Repentance. That means turning away from the presence of evil and getting yourself connected with the presence of God. Titus chapter 2. Why? Because our battle continues because we live... world that's disconnected from the presence of God. Titus chapter 2. Hallelujah. In verse 11, Titus 2.11, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. What's grace again? God's plan of escape. Teaching. See that word teaching? Why? Because you've got to be taught. Amen? Amen? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Now, it says that he might redeem us. Why is might? Every time you see the word might, it means you are responsible for cooperation. Amen? that he might redeem us, and that we would be a special people and zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority, and let no one despise you. In other words, you make sure you stand strong for that. Colos um, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6. The disconnected world. In verse 6, is everybody there? I mean, verse. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6. Okay. Let's speak it. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming. Hold on a second. Okay. As you, <laughs> it was a good verse to start off, though, wasn't it? <laughs> Colossians 2, 6. As you, therefore, have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as you have been taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, According to the tradition of men, that's human order, and according to the basic principles of the world, but not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him who is the head of all principality and what? Power. See, there's a difference between human order and divine order. We're to be living according. You can't live according to divine order without God's presence. It's impossible. And the lack of God's presence in an individual's life, then the lack of divine order. Do you ever get around people who are up and down? Up one day, down right. What? It's a lack of God's presence. Galatians. 
chapter 4. There's a difference, again, between human order and divine order. In human order, self is first. Human order always has self first, and money is second. <laughs> divine order is God's presence and God's will. God's presence is first, God's will is second. Amen? Galatians 4. Verse 1. So what's first in the human order? Self. What's second? Money. And what's first in divine order? God's presence. And what's second? God's will. Amen. Verse 1 in Ephesians 4. I mean Galatians 4. Sheesh, I'm in Ephesians 4. Let's speak it. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is a master of all, but under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of this world. We were slaves to unrighteousness under the elements of this world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons and daughters, God has sent forth his what? Spirit. The spirit of a son into your hearts, where you are crying out, Abba, Father, which means daddy. This means there's a connect in relationship. Why? Because it's presence to presence. Presence to presence. Now there's understanding. When it's not presence to presence, there's misunderstanding. It's confusion. Therefore, you are no longer a slave to this world, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then, indeed, when you did not know God, you served those, which by nature are known as what? Gods. False gods. But now after you have known God and are rather known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be what? In bondage. Many people turn back. And again, they turn back because of the lack of God's presence. Amen? Again, we are no longer slaves to worldly influence and lust and overwhelming desires. How many of y'all know addiction is an overwhelming desire? Amen. Amen. We are slaves of righteousness now. It's totally different. 2 Corinthians 5. What's it say? Therefore now... From now on, we wreck it, regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we've known Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in the anointing, hello, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of what? Reconciliation. And what is that reconciliation? To reconcile everyone else to the presence of God living in the disconnected world. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And now he's in me and you reconciling the world, those in the world, to him. Not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of what? Reconciliation. Now then we are what? ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 
Whoa. John chapter 15. And then one more scripture. Oh, glory. In verse 16, John 15, 16. Let's speak it together, please. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain and that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things I command you that you love one another. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they keep my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake because they do not know him who sent me. Powerful. Let's go a little further. I like this. <laughs> if I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. But when the helper, who is who? The Holy Spirit, the carrier of presence of God, the anointing carrier which is the eternal presence and power and truth of God Almighty. When him, the Holy Spirit, comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, he is known as the Spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father. He will testify of me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Ooh, yes. Now I'm going to close at 2 Peter chapter 1. We live in a disconnected world. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power. If his divine power is there, then his divine presence is there. Amen? As the divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue by which we have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Listen, the divine nature can't manifest without the divine presence. Amen. Having escaped the corruption, everyone say corruption, corruption, that is in the world through what? Lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a lot of people who really think that that entrance is still open to them. 
they're going to be very surprised when it's shut. And they are left here to go through tribulation. God's presence loves God's presence. That's why we are lovers of his presence. <laughs> if you lack the presence of God, you won't love God's presence. Amen? You'll love your presence. And your old presence is the presence of evil. It is sin. Enticing and deceiving. Amen? Powerful. Remember, we live in a disconnected world. It is disconnected from the presence of God. And the only way this world will be connected is through me and you who carry God's presence. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed for the anointing that breaks every yoke of bondage. Thank you for feeding us again today. You are so good to us. I ask, Lord, that you will strengthen everyone's inner man with the anointing that you'll open ears, eyes, and hearts to see, receive, and obey and hear what has been given. That there will be a release, even right now, of faith so that they can mix faith with your word that has been imparted today. And it will bear fruit for your glory in Jesus' name. Now, I'll prepare your house for communion, and you may bring tithes and offerings.